Buying beer ingredients in bulk can make your brew day a much more inexpensive affair and having ingredients on hand means you can whip up a beer whenever you want, no planning required. But how best to store your grains, hops and yeast? I have what amounts to a mini homebrew store in my basement. Here's what I use and the science behind it. Now my base malt storage of choice are these guys, Vittles Vaults. They hold a full sack of grain. So a 50 or a 55 pound sack, it can all fit in here. Now I have six of these suckers here for base malt. I'll typically keep one for pale two row malt and then I'll another one for Pilsner malt. And then I'll mix up the other four. Right now I have Munich malt, Vienna malt, Maris Otter and wheat malt. I do highly recommend these, but but I do have two tips if you're gonna use them to store your grains. Oh, there goes the back. Now the original intention of these things is for storing pet food and they claim to be stackable. In fact, they've got these ridges here so you can stack them on top of each other. Let me tell you, if you're putting beer grains in here, don't stack them. It doesn't work. It just cannot handle the amount of weight that a full set of beer grains in one of these places down on the one below it. I've walked a few of these. Don't stack them. Number two is the orientation. So if I open this guy up, I have to be a little bit careful here. This is not entirely full, but you can see the grain comes pretty high up here. And if this were full, it would be spilling all over the place. So uh, when I have a new bag like this, I'll be kind of tilting it backwards and trying to pull stuff out until I realized that you can orient these a different way, basically. Like that. Now, well, you're not going to be tempted to stack this thing because uh, there's no way to stack it, but there is no way any grain is falling out of this thing when you open it. So put them up this way. You'll get a lot more storage in there. Now, these are not inexpensive, but they should be pretty durable and last as long as I need them. Does the average home brewer need six of these guys for, well, what, 300 pounds of grain? Probably not. Do I sometimes find myself coming down into the basement for the sole purpose of sneaking a look at these beauties? No, no, of course I don't. Now the rest of my grains I have stored on this shelf here in various containers. We'll, uh, oh, we'll start with this guy. Now these buckets, BPO free, food safe, have gamma lids on the top, just like the Vittles vaults. And, uh, so easy to remove. Now this is not going to store a full bag of grains, but I can get around 20 pounds of grain in here, so almost half a bag. And yeah, because it has these gamma lids, you again get this really nice tight seal. And then I also have the little brother of this. Same deal, gamma lid on the top. And that is exactly 10 pounds of grain. These fit 10 pounds of grain just about perfectly. I use these for things like some of the crystal malts. I think I have crystal 45 in this size, honey malt, stuff that I'm going to use a pound or two of, but not much more than that. Then for everything else, I have these containers here for all of my specialty malts where I'm just going to need maybe half a pound, a quarter of a pound, maybe one pound. This one's special B. Now these are three quart canisters. I got them I'm from Dollar Tree, the dollar store that's here. Just make sure it's food safe. That's really the, the main thing. And also it would be better if you couldn't see through it so we could avoid light getting in. But um, I don't think it's too much of a problem. Now, it depends on the grain, but you can get about three pounds of grain in here, maybe three and a half pounds. Things like flake corn, you might get a bit less than that. This takes up a lot of space, but weighs virtually nothing. So it's not always three and a half pounds, but about that in each one of these. And I have 24 of these, all with different specialty malts in. That gives me a very varied selection of malts that I can choose from. It's not everything you can get at the homebrew store, of course, but it's a good amount. So with all of this, these 24, plus those five I have in the smaller tubs, the bigger buckets, and then the six Vittles vaults, I've got most grains that I need for almost any beer. And should you ever reach this level of insanity, Get yourself a label maker. These things are fantastic for printing out what is on each one of these things. Your OCD will thank you. And I label absolutely everything. Grains are super resilient. Us humans have been harvesting them in the fall and storing them all through the winter for food after all. But there are some factors that can harm our precious malt. Those are light, moisture, heat, and well, rodents. 
So keep grains in a sealed vessel at room temperature and you should be good for years. Now with hops, it's easy. They go in the freezer. And I'm fortunate that working with Brewlosophy here, I'm sponsored with my hops from Yakima Valley Hops and I have a freezer full of these things. But whether you're using the small one ounce or 28 gram packets or the big one pound bags, freeze them. Make sure you freeze them. Now for storage, I just have these things. I found these at Lowe's storage bins that are stackable. So just stack nicely like that and I have three of them stacked like this in my freezer. I try to keep a good range of hops on hand. I've got some bittering hops like Magnum. Got the old staples like Citra, some New World hops, Pacific Jade. Looking forward to giving these a try. Now, while you typically will see hops in those one ounce bags, I do like to buy them in bulk. So this is a half pound bag. This is eight ounces of hops. This is the one pound or 16 ounce. Just like the grain, it's much cheaper to buy these things in bulk. And I just love having a wide selection around. So again, I can just brew whenever I want and probably find the hops that I need in there or at least a close substitute. And you can keep these things for years. I've done an experiment that tested that. Where is the old hop? Spot on once again. Now, given that hop suppliers often make it a point to ship their product in the most oxygen-free manner possible, what is the long-term impact of possible oxygen exposures to hops? Well, Brewlosophy contributor Jake Houlihan put that to the test by separating a bag of Motueka hops between a vacuum-sealed bag and a sandwich zipper bag. He tossed both bags into his freezer where they remained for six months. Jake then brewed two batches of American Pale Ale, digging out those hops and used the vacuum sealed hops in one batch and the loose baggy hops in another, with additions at 60 minutes, 30 minutes, 5 minutes and a dry hop. The beers came out looking the same, but what did participants think? Well, each participant was served one sample of the beer made from vacuum sealed hops and two samples of the beer made from hops stored in a non-purged baggy, then asked to identify the sample that was unique. Nine tasters would have to correctly identify the unique sample in order to reach statistical significance, and only four picked the odd beer out. But when Jake did his own semi-blind taste test, he thought he could tell a difference, and in fact, four out of the five times he was correct. So I wouldn't rule out the value of vacuum sealing your hops. I bought one of these. I used to vacuum seal my hops all the time. I had the little bags here for that as well, but I never bother anymore, and I've not noticed a difference. Now dry yeast, I just tend to store that at room temperature. You can put that in the fridge if you want. But if you're using liquid yeast like I am from Imperial Yeast, you'll want to keep this stuff in the fridge. Now the reason for that is as the yeast warms up, you're going to start losing viability of those yeast cells. So it's important that you keep this cold as long as possible. I'm already just feeling nervous by the fact that I'm just recording this piece out to camera now and these things aren't in the fridge yet. Now yeast do kind of break this whole thing of, hey, I've got all of my ingredients at home, I can brew whenever I want. Because when you have liquid yeast, it does have an expiration date. It's recommended that you use this within four months of manufacture date. If I do exceed the four month manufacture date, I'm not gonna chuck this away though. Typically I'll just use a yeast starter and that will increase the vitality of the yeast. And uh, in many cases I've done that and it's been fine, but it is something to, to keep an eye on. All right, this is going back in the fridge. <sighs> That's better. There is actually one way you can work around this so that you can have yeast for years on premises and not have to worry about it. That's to freeze the yeast. I have a whole process for taking yeast, freezing it into these little vials and then restarting it with the yeast starter. I could do a video on that if you're interested. Let me know in the comments. So that's storage. Look, we've been running this YouTube channel, The Brewlosophy Show, for about six months now. So we launched in February and have been releasing videos every week since then. And it's been really interesting to see your reaction to them, you, the viewer. When we started this channel, we started to think, what would a video version of Brewlosophy look like? And there were some obvious things, the existing Brewlosophy projects. So experiments, those have been a ton of fun. The Hop Chronicles, short and shoddy. But then we've also thrown in some uh, novelty brew days, I guess you could call them, like working with ChatGPT or brewing with apple juice. And we've done things like interviews with experts in the home brewing world. I've learned a ton from that. And some of these videos have been really well received and some of them not so. And we're gonna keep doing some of that stuff that you've really enjoyed, but we're also gonna keep experimenting with new episodes as well. And on that note, 
I am really excited for you to see the videos that we have coming out in the next couple of months that are in pre-production right now because we're up to some fun stuff. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Keep up to date with the channel. We release new videos every Thursday. I'll be back next week with another episode. And until then, think beer.